Welcome everybody to this quick talk on clinical hypnotherapy and what are some important things to understand about to uh, be able to learn that material well, what's in the course and what does the trainer need to know about. You know, hypnotherapy is not like baked beans. Uh, that, you know, it's just a similar product across the board with some variations. Then there are good teachers out there who kind of have bring a lot of different knowledge and background to it. And there's many who are very undertrained and lack really deep knowledge of either, either hypnotherapy skills or uh, even more importantly in many ways to an understanding of the content that's revealed in hypnotherapy and how to process that effectively, safely. And so there are many elements in this clinical hypnotherapy course to quickly look at, and then we'll touch on the teacher. Um, there are, it's an analytical approach to hypnotherapy because in the words of Dave Elman, I don't do that suggestion therapy, he said. Although he gave a lot of great suggestions, he didn't consider that to be the whole therapy. That's very inadequate and even counterproductive sometimes, believe it or not. So along with knowing about how to really work with the subconscious, having powerful hypnotherapy skills, and a lot of knowledge about how to develop very good personalized programming, one has to understand about the deeper levels of the subconscious to even uncover what are the best programming instructions for that individual. Uh, be able to uncover where they're stuck, how their mind thinks about the problem, where they need to go with it, because it's the client's journey. It's not what the therapist overlays on it. Uh, that's very uh, superficial therapy. And as Freud said back in the day, often the results of hurling programming at people is that it's short term and often superficial in most cases. So uh, Elman said, analytical hypnotherapy is the crown jewel of hypnotherapy. Back then he called it hypnoanalysis. And he produced a lot of great ideas at the time, really updating it for the time in which he was teaching doctors, which is the 50s and early 60s mainly. And the doctors were very, very taken with, thrilled with what Dave Ellman taught. And he trained more physicians than anybody else. And so his work was very effective. Doctors found it very effective. Uh, people like Gil Boyne in particular took Ellman's work and added to and developed as knowledge grew. As the psychotherapy grew out of the simplistic Freudian ideas, uh, which of course had in turn had come from hypnotherapy Freud discovered about the subconscious or unconscious through his studies with Charcot and other hypnotherapy people, but they had been working for over a hundred years already. And so Freud's ideas weren't new, but he certainly knew how to popularize them. And he abandoned hypnosis at one point because he thought as material comes up, we, it can be very overwhelming. Well, we know a lot more how to handle that back at, than back in Freud days. And that's the whole point. It is with through hypnotherapy, we get past the psychic defenses and bring material up. And people often said to me, I've covered more in that half hour with you than I did in several years of therapy, believe it or not, because I had awareness of some emotions and I knew where I was kind of stuck, but I didn't really understand the deeper roots of those emotions. What were the significant beliefs underneath that? And this has come out through the hypnotherapy. It's digging down into the hole, so to speak, rather than speculating and talking about the surface level. And so uh, if we look at psychotherapy, it's the branches really that have come from that big trunk and roots that is hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy enc encompasses all of the best psychotherapy ideas. And frankly, a lot of those branches now weren't very fruit bearing. We could trim them off, prune them off and remove them and stay with what's been learned about the mind through hypnotherapy. And so uh, it's analytical. You begin to understand on that clinical hypnotherapy course to analyze the issues. And then through the analy advanced analytical hypnotherapy training, you can do a lot more with it. But on clinical hypnotherapy alone, you've got great skills and tools to work with people, helping them get in touch with deeper material. Uh, a man contacted me a few days ago and he said, I want to send a, a friend of mine to you. I came to you for one session and it was life changing. And he said, you took me back and you dealt with my mummy daddy issues 
as you called him at the time. And that was about six years ago, he said, I'd like to send somebody to you now. Now, sometimes the results are very dramatic. Maybe the motivation, readiness for change is very strong in that individual. They're ready to forgive, move on, and so on. Several factors play into that. But everybody gets benefit unless they really want to sabotage everything. Some will have dramatic benefit. It's almost like a miracle cure, although we never call it a miracle. It's working with correcting what's gone on in the mind at a deeper level. And that's where you need the knowledge and skills. When Freud came up with his theories about the mind and built on what other people had said, and then in the Freudian tradition, you had the Winnicott and Bowlby and their theories about attachment and separation, anxiety, abandonment, problems with socialization, poor parenting, so that there's a lack of maturation in individuals carrying all kinds of baggage, and all the different theories and opinions that developed in psychotherapy originally coming from hypnotherapy. And so you learn enough about these so you can interpret and help the client understand and interpret what's gone on in their mind, how their problems have developed, and then begin then with that knowledge to be able to really effectively change the scripts, the deep underlying beliefs. What gets in can come out. It's just a question of going about in the right way. So uh, let me give you an example uh, how a deep approach is needed of them. Now that's not to deny that there aren't cognitive elements to this work, there are cognitive behavior, psychodynamic and many areas can feed into this. If the person is very spiritual and religious, we will talk about the transcendental aspects with which hypnosis can be associated and how to deal with those. However, most people are coming for more mundane applications of the therapy. Now, uh, an example that does spring to mind, a man who came into a great fear of uh, making mistakes, a great fear of uh, rejection and failure. You know, if he fails, he'll be very rejected by himself and others. And so he knew he has had a lot of therapy. So he knew he came from a difficult background. His mother and father had not been nurturing. He felt not very loved, not very confident then about himself and very easily prone to self-criticism. So the idea of making a mistake and exposed to the criticism of others was obviously very frightening. So therefore, he would not tackle and learn in life the way you need to learn, that the so-called failures are simply learning experiences and so on. Now, it's very simple and easy in many cases to take them back, and we did work on mummy-daddy issues. And for a lot of people, analytical work, well, that's it. They feel, well, I know, we know where it comes from and that's, but if you know analytical work at a deeper level, and he had said certain things earlier on that made me think, all right, this is quite deep in some ways, but very specific. Yes, he has self-rejection, lack of self-belief, lack of self-love and all of that. However, this problem seems to have a very powerful element uh, that generates such intense fear within him. And so I wanted to make sure I'd gone into it enough. And so this is where you need to know about getting into the deeper roots of the issue. And so having dealt with mommy and daddy, and that was in that one session, we had enough time to do it. And he was, having done some previous work, he was already a bit primed. And so we did take that work further. And he said that's taken a lot further, he said, much further than, uh, than, than I ever expected in one session. It's, that's remarkable. Now I probed deeper within uh, his early experiences. And then I came across what was the key? There was uh, a teacher in his life who really disliked him for whatever reason. Perhaps he reminded him of his son. Perhaps he had reminded him some parts of himself when he was younger. His teacher was very critical, negative, punitive. Back in the day when you could slap students, he got a lot of slaps. And so that was the, the core experiences core negative learning experience, maladaptive learning, that gave him such a fear of being wrong, of making mistakes. And without going into that and uncovering about that teacher and dealing with that, and maybe there's one or two other examples there in his life that's fed into this. You don't have to do them all in the one session, but clearing that with that teacher, 
there was a palpable change within him in that session. He said, there's a knot in my stomach that's gone that's been there for years. I didn't even know it was there. Sometimes people say there's been a lump in my chest I've been carrying off of that one or two session, which that's dissipated. Now, we're not claiming it all needs to be done in one or two sessions. That's a very big mistake to make. We go as long as we need to, as deep as we need to, and um, it may take a few sessions, but it's not going to take 5, 10, 20 years going over the past. People need to move on, but they need to deal with these deeper issues, the internal conflicting negative fixed beliefs, negative fixed ideas. And so that's just one example of many where if you don't do enough of the deeper uncovering work, you won't always find the most important events. You find a layer of the problem, you deal with it, you get some benefits, but you don't really get the most important powerful results that you could get. So I urge people to study this in depth. And that's what we go into in this clinical hypnotherapy course. And you learn more as you go along through our training to take it further. Quickly then on core traits, because I talked about, uh, briefly mentioned that we need to look at the, th the therapist. So the therapist has to have that knowledge, understanding hypnotherapy, they must have deep knowledge of the mind, of the psychology of learning and development and how to correct those. And that's taught in our courses. That, and people can learn more in their homework reading and so on. And they even take other courses that feed into this, but they already have basic knowledge and skills that can be developed to become very effective by working with clients and understanding the client's reactions and needs. It's not all about accumulating intellectual knowledge, but um, that has its place. Now, the therapist has to have worked on themselves and understood their own baggage to be able to look uh, realistically, accurately, effectively into the client's issues. The core traits is Rogers developed uh, his list of empathy, regard and warmth and so on. Or however, word, there are different words used at different times for this. And then uh, in the case of uh, Rothstein's 10 core traits, the effective therapist that feeds into the therapeutic relationship. So that therapist is not only had sufficient knowledge of psychology, of hypnotherapy, has also done a lot of work on themselves to, de to develop those traits. We may have one or two of them in abundance, but at Rothstein, back in the 90, 80s and 90s, developed his list of 10 traits, which is very important to learn about when we teach about those in our courses. So you may have areas where you're a bit weaker as a therapist. You need to learn about how to deal with those, how to develop those elements, those traits, and bring them all to the highest possible level you can within yourself to be the best for the client. So these are some of the things that we need to look for when we're looking for a good therapist and a good course. Have they walked the talk? Is their knowledge deep, profound? Have they have the experience of working with lots of clients over a considerable period of time, minimum of five years of working solidly with clients, preferably about 10 years. And I always say after about 30 years, you can become quite a master in the work if you've really learned and practiced in depth. And so search out the teachers that work best for you, investigate thoroughly the quantity and quality of knowledge uh, that's being given, and don't be just taken in by claims and glossy advertising through the internet. It's easy to make claims and to under deliver. So, by all means, you can get in contact with us, look at the website. We can give you more information in detail and help you on your learning journey. And I hope you will take advantage of learning from us at some point. So until the next time, this is John Butler speaking. Keep well and keep practicing if you're a therapist. And we hope to hear from some of you very soon.